Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're talking about an awesome free tool that every single one of you should have in your toolbox, especially if you do any shader programming or if you just want to play around with shaders in general. What we're talking about today is Shader Ed, or actually I like to call it Shade Red, but it's not the name of it. Uh, and I've actually covered this in the past on this channel, but it is so good it is definitely worth covering twice, especially because there are some improvements in this guy and there's one improvement of particular note for you Godot developers. So everybody stick around, check out a really awesome free and open source tool, Shader Ed. So here we are, this is Shader Ed. You can see right here a preview of your shader running. And you can use this guy to develop your GLSL and HLSL. So that's the two major shader languages out there. You can use it to develop and run and test and now debug shaders of your choice. And shaders are becoming more and more and more important for the world of game development. So a tool like this is kind of essential. So here you see it is running this really cool um, shader right here. And you might be wondering, okay, well, that's nice. What do we do with this? Well, I come over here and I can basically just open up the shader. So here we can see uh, we got the vertex shader and the pixel shaders over here. And you've got available, um, there's the code for running it. Here's the code for the other guy. You can basically straight out editor um, features available right here. So you can type your code in right there, change them on the fly and run and see your results. Over here you can see you can set up um, properties to be passed in. So you can pick the shaders. You can even bring in simple objects that can be run here. Um, and your shader is previewed over here. So you can use it just as a straight up shader editor, um, but there's more to it than that. So here we got our shader running. Now I can do with this guy running now, as so I can hit the space bar and we just paused our shader. Now I can pick any pixel on the screen. So let's say this one, I wanna see the magic that figured out this pixel. So what I did is I clicked on it and you can notice over here we got uh, a new thing. So basically we got the uh, RGBA value of the pixel I clicked on. See there's the end result of it. But where it gets cool is I can now click this fetch button and we've got more details on it. I can see there's the triangle that's being handled. I can go in here to the vertices and we can jump in and now what we've got is a full-blown debugger going on. So if I want to come in here and see how things were going, I can go in here and set a breakpoint. We can do our step in, step out, continue and so on. So we can literally step line by line. So right here you can see this is, we're just entering main for the uh, the shader here and we can go ahead we can do a step in there's the the values we can see each value as we're coming to it they're available over here so you can see the values as they are calculated and we can just kind of continue on I could start the the shader from the beginning I'll hit this break point and we can, we can debug how our functions are working how our shader works we can step through existing shaders to figure out how they work so you've got this really cool step-by-step -step debugging ability of shaders now that is built into shader ed language so we can sit here hit space bar and we can go back to running so if you're interested you can actually there's a bunch of different options to work from so come back here um, out of the box in the shader um, the shader ed directory there's a bunch of examples that you can work from so say you wanted to work on uh, geometry shaders there's a project here for geometry shaders there are a number of different ones there there are the, the things in your scene so we got um, we've got a sphere in the pipeline and we've got so there we can control the sphere so I could change the size and such of it over here and then we've got light control here we can see the shaders that are being calculated and done uh, we've got a number of different shaders to start from the cool thing here also is they've converted a couple of shader toy if you've never been to shader toy in your life it is a really cool site that's got a ton of different shaders on it so you can basically use it as a starting point for your journey into shaders and you can bring those shaders into shader ed and kind of really step by step walk through how they work and kind of pull the pieces apart to figure out how things work. So here is your, your shader. You can have multiple passes on your shader. Um, so here is a simple shader pass. This guy is uh, the geometry pass going on right there. All of your code is again, once again, available here to debug. Really a neat, cool, free, open source cross-platform tool. That's another thing that actually changed with this release as well. So let's get into a little bit of what is new here. So that is the tool, it, it does what it does well. So if you even just needed something to write a shader and see the results immediately, both GLSL and HLSL, this is a great tool for that. So if you just wanna come in here and start writing code, you can see the end results over here. You got control over what's being passed into them, the number of passes that are going to happen. The, the windows are completely customizable. So anything you wanna get rid of at any particular time, you can easily do so. Performance is great. 
So if you wanna just see your shader running full screen, you've got that capability as well. All right, so let's get in, learn a little bit more about this guy, heading back over to the website. Now, first off, I did a video about this guy in the past. As I mentioned, I covered this guy, oh, what was that, about seven or eight months ago in July, and it was a great tool then, but it's gotten even better since. So if you want a little bit more in depth with it, I did this video, it was fairly well received, and then there was that person. So anyways, uh, so there is an existing video. I will link this with the link down below. Uh, but if you're interested in checking it out, well, one of the new things that happened is they now have a website. So when I did that last video, no website. Now they have a website. It is available at shadered.org, like so. And here you can see a complete uh, feature complete shader editor, IDE that makes developing advanced shaders easier. With this tool, you're not limited to vertex and pixel shaders. Your project can also create compute and geometry shaders. Uh, shader Ed also comes with built-in shader debugger. The debugger currently only supports pixel and vertex shaders, but the support for geometry and commute is coming soon. Besides those two prominent features, also features render textures, render states, buffers, 3D and 2D textures, cube maps, instancing 3D model and geometry, live preview, plugin API, etc. And that plugin API is another part of this that new is new. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this guy is cross-platform, free and open source. We'll get to the source code part in just a second. Um, so yeah, it's it's an excellent tool that everybody should definitely just go ahead, grab it, download it, put it in your toolbox. So a couple of the new features here though. So we got the new debugger, which is awesome. Another thing they added was add-on. So there is now a plugins option. So we got a couple of different, so if you go to the add-on section, there's nothing here for themes. Um, Nothing here for shaders, but plugins. This is the part that's really relevant, is we now have a Godot shader and a shader toy input. Shader toy input is a plugin that basically makes it easier to bring in shader toy shaders. So like I said, shader toy is probably where you wanna start. Go to shader toy, check out a tool that you really like, use this plugin to import it, and you're good to go. But where a lot of you are probably interested is this just released like five days ago, this Godot shader plugin. This plugin adds support for Godot shader language. Uh, also, it has some new pipeline items. Now, unfortunately, it is not, oh, did I delete it? I did too, bummer. Okay, I'll go back here. So it's not 100% support yet right now. The plugin um, currently only supports the canvas shaders. More will be added soon. So there's a number of different types of shaders in um, the Godot language. There's uh, also, there's sh shader, spatial, uh, a couple others. So basically, this is only going to work for the 2D shader side of things. Uh, so no light shaders, no 3D shaders yet. But if you're working on a canvas shader, uh, you can now use their language, the um, Godot's customized shader language, directly inside of Shader Ed, and it will run and work. And you're noticing it's compiling on the fly. So as he was typing it, there's a little red arrow up there saying that this isn't a compatible shader. And you see here, it's using the Godot shader language to write it. And there is your end result, which is kind of, and you're even down here, you're getting real time uh, feedback of, you know, why your shader isn't currently compiling. So if you are a Godot developer looking to create Godot shaders, you can do them directly in here as well. And I do believe uh, the debugging support works, um, but unfortunately it's still a work. Oh no, debugger is coming soon. So it's not there as of yet. Um, besides the canvas material, uh, you can also add Sprite and back buffer coffee. And then, yeah, so that is it. So that, that's the beginning. If you're doing 2D canvas material shaders in the Godot language or, or using the Godot engine, you can now do them directly inside of Shader Ed. So what you would previously you have to do is like type it in like GLSL and then slightly translate it over into the Godot format. Now no more needing to do that. You can actually type some GLSL or some Godot shader language stuff directly in Shader Ed. And you know, the support and the functionality is going to be improved over time, but that's part of their new ad in functionality. So you see here, lightweight cross-platform IDE, the source code is available. It is under the MIT license. The MIT license allows you to do pretty much what you want. It's one of the most liberal licenses out there. If you're wondering in terms of source code, uh, it's a C++ project. So if you've ever wanted to jump in and see some more C++ code or you want to contribute to the project, again, it is uh, uh, open source and under a very liberal license available up on GitHub. I will link that obviously in the linked article down below, along with the video I previously did on Shader Ed. If you want to go into a little bit more depth about what it can do. And like I said, since the last version, we added debugger support, we added these plugin APIs, that plugin APIs added Godot support. 
that's pretty awesome. Uh, amazing how well this guy has actually advanced at this point in time. And again, there's a lot of nice shaders here for you to get started and going with. You can just kind of come up here and start. And one of these actually, this one is an audio shader. I'm not going to blow your ears out by playing it, but it'll give you an idea of what you can do here. We got a tune shader example. So even if you just wanted to kind of get in and start learning them, um, you've got a ton of options here. Uh, and again, really simple to start learning. It's a great tool for that if you wanna learn HLSL or GLSL or now GD script or GD uh, shader language shaders. Uh, shader Ed comes highly, highly recommended. So if you're looking to add a free tool to your toolbox, Shader Ed, make it that. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.